in the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. It gives me great pleasure to, me, to be with you in this session entitled Iraq and Yemen's response to COVID-19 and its repercussions. Indeed, uh, the pandemic has uh, attracted uh, the attention of the leaders. Uh, the pandemic has uh, affected all sectors, educational, psychological, entertainment-related sectors, uh, and uh, further sectors, uh, the response has been different from one country to another. I am glad to uh, uh, present uh, uh, to you Dr. Hassan Latif Kazim. He is a professor of economic development at the School of Management and Economics at the Kufa University, Najaf, Iraq. He is also the director of the Rafi Dane Center for Dialogue in Iraq. He has published many books, studies, uh, research papers in international and Arab peer-reviewed journals. Most recently, the economic and social consequences of the coronavirus pandemic in Iraq and uh, the book Iraq and Economic History published by Beit al-Hikmah in 2021 and uh, circular economy initiatives uh, through energy accounting and sustainable energy performance uh, at the International Journal of Mathematical Engineering and Management Sciences in 2020. Dr. Hassan has a paper entitled Iraq and the COVID-19 crisis, political imbalance and response failures. 20 minutes, sir. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum, a very good day to you. I'd like to extend my gratitude first and foremost to the organizers at the Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies. I'd like to thank Qatar for hosting us. As far as the Iraqi response to COVID, the answer is uh, problematic, uh, despite the fact that the liter literature available uh, in this issue is multifaceted. It covers three dimensions, uh, 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 in fact, uh, international, regional, and local studies. Uh, assessed the matter and uh, uh, the academic dimension uh, is in conformity with the first dimension so most of the studies uh, uh, tried to regurgitate uh, the same uh, results uh, and there is also a third uh, uh, pattern or propensity that is independent which uh, uh, attempted to uh, reassess uh, the issue and uh, uh, monitor the uh, repercussions, the implications, and the quality of the procedures, uh, and uh, uh, depended uh, on uh, certain indicators uh, that uh, relate to poverty. On the 24th, uh, or on the 24th of February in Najaf, uh, uh, patient zero uh, has been discovered, uh, and uh, the government uh, uh, took certain measures. Uh, a cell has been uh, formed uh, to deal with the crisis. Uh, uh, decisions uh, uh, have uh, been taken and procedures uh, were implemented. Uh, in addition to the institution's uh, initiative, uh, 
there were different initiatives uh, and the first document uh, related to the Kadhimi Manifesto, the uh, Kadhimi came along following uh, uh, tumultuous times, uh, especially uh, since November up until uh, uh, May 2020. And uh, the uh, government's agenda alluded to certain procedures to stave off the pandemic. Uh, the uh, government, uh, in addition to that, uh, has had white paper in place, uh, a comprehensive uh, reformative uh, paper that uh, had put the diagnosis of the problems of Iraq. And lately, we had uh, the recovery plan uh, and the response plan uh, uh, which uh, uh, have been issued uh, lately to deal directly with this crisis. The current government, al Qadimi's government, restructured uh, the working group uh, or the cell, expanded its uh, uh, jurisdiction and incorporated uh, uh, a number of uh, additional uh, members, 12 ministers and 16 other individuals. Uh, and. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the health response uh, at the outset uh, was to do with uh, confronting this pandemic uh, on the short term. Uh, ventilators uh, were supplied uh, and uh, the scope of the production of uh, oxygen has been expanded as well and uh, uh, specialized uh, medical centers uh, to treat uh, the patients uh, have been established. Uh, tracking the virus uh, was afoot and uh, 11,000 beds were added to the uh, hospital's uh, capacities. Moreover, the uh, caravan hospitals uh, were utilized as well. Uh, nevertheless, uh, in 2021, uh, 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 the health sector uh, was overwhelmed uh, because of the uh, financial limitations. Uh, 40 million uh, uh, Iraqis uh, ought to have been taken care of, uh, and the budget uh, was not uh, up to the standards, uh, and uh, this is the financial limitations that I'm talking about. Uh, the vaccination rollout program uh, on the 30th of May 2021 uh, took place, uh, and uh, uh, this uh, actually uh, has been delayed uh, for six months uh, in comparison to the other Gulf countries. Uh, uh, the performance uh, was somewhat poor in the vaccination rollout program. As far as uh, the So, here comes the assessment of the vaccination programs. Uh, the plan, uh, as I said, was postponed for months and months. Uh, the Ministry of Health uh, wanted to launch the plan in April, however, uh, it took place uh, two months later, and up to this moment, uh, 
the total doses, the total number of doses uh, is uh, to the tune of 7 million. However, those who uh, are doubly vaccinated are less than 4 million. That means uh, we uh, haven't met the target uh, and uh, the uh, uh, indicators uh, do tell us this very fact. Uh, we uh, we have liaised with uh, the WHO to raise uh, uh, awareness amongst the populace and uh, to boost uh, the momentum of the vaccination program. And uh, we envision that uh, meeting the target uh, uh, will be a flop, uh, i.e. 70% uh, of the population ought to have been vaccinated, but uh, I think we will not get there. As far as the, uh, the, the, the economic response, uh, indeed, uh, there was a legal austerity rather than uh, an economic austerity, uh, uh, because the federal uh, budget law has not been enacted uh, in 2020, and hence uh, it uh, 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 relied on the rule that is called one over 12, which means uh, one part uh, out of 12 parts. Uh, the budget uh, was to the tune of 111 Ira trillion Iraqi, uh, uh, but uh, what has been uh, spent is uh, 68 percent of uh, this uh, sum, uh, 76 trillion. Uh, and uh, this has added uh, more uh, limitations uh, as far as uh, uh, confronting the pandemic and its uh, uh, repercussions. The central uh, bank uh, has uh, reduced uh, the interest rates uh, on the loans uh, and provided privileges to the major uh, programs or projects, uh, but still the interest is high. Uh, it, com it comes to 9% uh, on the loans uh, taken by the SMEs, and this is a huge uh, uh, interest rate uh, whereby half of the loan uh, will be paid uh, as interest uh, on the midterm. Uh, so the SMEs were overwhelmed uh, with this move. I uh, have asked uh, the competent authorities to provide data uh, uh, pertinent to the governorates, uh, but uh, the uh, data is lacking, and uh, the procedures uh, were streamlined, but they were naive and simple in facing the pandemic. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the plummeting oil prices uh, coincided with the pandemic, uh, and as you know, Iraq, uh, by and large, uh, uh, depends on oil, so it had lost half of the revenues uh, uh, of the government uh, because we totally depend on the oil revenues. Uh, uh, this has uh, constituted a shock in the uh, GDP rate uh, uh, globally. Uh, in accordance with the uh, available estimations, uh, the, uh, this had represented uh, uh, 27% uh, uh, in losses, uh, and this has also affected uh, the GDP per person. Uh, $7,000 uh, uh, was the figure. Now it is 6000 only. And obviously, this uh, has affected the purchasing power and the economic path uh, in general. Iraq uh, uh, has been facing uh, different uh, problems, uh, especially when it comes to entrepreneurship. The percentage of those who own and manage projects uh, is less than 10 percent, uh, and uh, uh, this has uh, repercussions on uh, the business practice index. Uh, Iraq is ranked 
172 uh, this uh, affected also the income it has uh, reduced the income to the tune of 27 percent uh, the crisis also uh, affected the uh, tourism industry the aviation industry and uh, uh, those who took loans uh, defaulted uh, and the low performance loans uh, increased uh, to the tune of 18 uh, percent this is uh, a landscape of the obstacles that the iraqis have faced uh, due to the shortcomings uh, of the governmental programs in terms of the uh, societal response uh, the procedures uh, uh, failed to protect the populace so many iraqis uh, were ensnared in the uh, uh, poverty the poverty rates uh, uh, has become uh, 31 percent that means uh, one third of the iraqis have become poor despite the fact that the ministry of planning had different estimations it says that uh, uh, the poverty rate uh, uh, has become 29 percent uh, but still the independent estimations uh, uh, said that uh, the percentage is still increasing uh, that means 13 million Iraqis are poor uh, and indeed this is a huge percentage uh, in a country that is brimful with problems if we analyze uh, the uh, uh, governmental recovery related uh, programs uh, we understand that uh, the government uh, has said that 16 trillion dinars uh, have been spent by the government but uh, despite the fact that this number constitutes 22 percent of the public expenditure uh, concedes the fact uh, that uh, the ministry of uh, finance uh, uh, consolidates uh, the numbers uh, with the uh, pensioners salaries and uh, uh, those who are uh, covered uh, in the private sector uh, are few those who are registered are half a million out of eight million so I have half a million uh, uh, private sector workers uh, are protected but 7.5 million are not when the economic activities in Iraq uh, 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 is uh, uh, ranked uh, at the bottom of the list uh, uh, globally the government uh, has failed also to uh, provide incentives and provide uh, uh, security uh, credits for those who are registered at the Ministry of Social Affairs uh, and uh, uh, this uh, all uh, 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 reflects uh, the uh, mediocre approach by the government as far as the development related response uh, this uh, reflects uh, the uh, efforts made to uh, stay economically on the right path if i might say uh, in relation to the SDGs uh, the data are there and despite the fact that there is an improvement in the rank of Iraq uh, it used to be 113 and now it is 105 but uh, this uh, uh, happened because of the uh, poor performance of uh, other countries uh, uh, during the pandemic uh, and it's nothing to do with the successful programs uh, of the Iraqi government uh, Iraq uh, 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 in accordance with the SDG number one eradicating poverty has done badly despite the fact that we inched closer to meet this target in the past in 2018 
and uh, 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 the performance uh, uh, was supposed to carry on in order to meet uh, completely the first SDG. But because of the implications of the uh, pandemic and uh, the foreign exchange fluctuations, uh, we uh, failed to meet this uh, first uh, SDG. So we thought of uh, uh, putting into place uh, a manual of response uh, in order to understand the recovery. We thought uh, that we shall focus on four elements. Uh, the first is the health-related uh, 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 response uh, and the performance uh, in accordance with the Louis uh, Center has been uh, uh, dealt with, uh, and uh, this indicator hinges on uh, the median uh, uh, performance rate. Yes, one minute and I shall finish. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, the median rate uh, of performance uh, uh, in the first weeks uh, following discovering 100 patients uh, who have contracted the virus. Uh, uh, so, we needed to have uh, uh, to put into place uh, a unified manual, and uh, the data, as I said, uh, were there, and uh, they emanated from 98 countries. Uh, the economic uh, effectiveness uh, were uh, uh, measured in accordance with a score out of five. The societal response and uh, protecting of the societal coherence uh, 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 related uh, to the measurement of the uh, uh, reverse poverty line and the latest one uh, related to the SDGs and the performance thereby. And as you can see on this uh, table, New Zealand uh, was ranked first, the second is Latvia. And uh, uh, Qatar and Bahrain uh, also bought very well uh, the ranks of 32 and 33, uh, Kuwait 51, Saudi Arabia 50, Iraq 81. So this illustrates uh, in figures uh, what has been achieved uh, uh, in meeting the targets. Sorry for taking much of your time. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Dr. Hassan Kadim, for this paper that has highlighted the responsiveness for the pandemic in Iraq, the development, living, and uh, social implications uh, thereof. Dr. Yasin al Maktari is now joining us online. Dr. Salah is an associate professor of economics and finance and head of the Department of Economics and Finance at Sana'a University. He has published many books, studies and research papers and a number of Arab peer-reviewed journals on the subject of monetary federalism, particular economic frontier extraction and the COVID pandemic, most recently among the applications of the pandemic in wartime in Hikama 2020. He has a PhD in economics and finance from the University of Paris. He will have a, a paper entitled COVID-19. Response and economic implications for Yemen. You have 20 minutes. Hello everyone. At the outset, it gives me great pleasure to be part of this eighth session of the Gulf Studies Forum. I would also like to thank the Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies for having allowed me to contribute with this COVID-19 response and economic implications for Yemen in this session. When we speak about the Yemeni economy, we can speak about rentier economy. Such an economy relies on very limited resources, external resources, 
تاثر على الاقتصاد اليميني في البنك And many external factors affect this economy positively and negatively. Before the pandemic, the Yemeni economy was suffering from many structural uh, imbalances. However, the war has made this even further, has deepened this even further. Uh, which was also compounded by the pandemic. It relies on three main sources, oil and gas, foreign remittances, as well as uh, foreign aid and assistance and other activities. But they are not very considered. There is a special aspect or specificity for Yemen related to the war and the pandemic. Also, the war that produced a number of multiple authorities represented by the internationally recognized legitimate uh, authority, as well as the Houthis, which is a different authority. There is also a controversy around the fact uh, to identify which is more important, economy or health. This is something that we've been discussing since the very beginning of the pandemic. So which one do you give priority to, uh, the economy or health? Uh, this has caused a lot of controversy amongst economists and health experts. We can divide uh, this topic to three uh, issues, dissemination, response, and economic uh, implications. The spread of the virus. The spread was most prominent in the second and third waves. The third wave is something that Yemen is now witnessing. The second issue is the fact that the cases were uh, registered very late. The first one was registered on the 10th of April 2020. The delay was for two reasons. First, the exclusion or the cutoff from the outer world. Uh, we missed the second reason. So as you've noticed, on the screen, you can see the <coughs> change in the number of cases. The second wave in Yemen happened in parallel with the third wave worldwide, and this is due to the fact that Yemen started opening up to the outer world as the exit and entry points were open. So, uh, the highest number of cases registered in one day were 2,900 cases. What we can say is that the cases registered are not truly reflective of the reality of the cases in Yemen. All those registered cases come from the legitimate uh, and internationally recognized uh, authority regions, unlike the situation in the Houthi controlled areas. Dr. Salah. We cannot see your presentation, unfortunately, Dr. Salah. Can you kindly try to share your screen with us? What about now? No, not yet. <laughs> Maybe you turn the presentation off and our technical team will try to share the screen uh, from their uh, um, equipment.
Should he open it again? Dr. Salah, kindly close your uh, PowerPoint in total, not totally, and then reopen it. I will share again. Yes, it's working. What about now? Here it is. Perfect. Go ahead, doctor. You can uh, begin. I mean, I'm sorry to having uh, for having interrupted you. So, according to what you see on the screen, you see that the second wave in Yemen was in line with the third uh, globally, and the third one in Yemen was in line or in parallel with the fourth one globally. <coughs> Until now, the fifth wave ha hasn't yet happened in Yemen. There were no registered cases until the 20th of November. The number of cases are going down, thankfully. The number of cases uh, totaled 10,000 until 26th of November, but they are not truly really reflective of the situation in Yemen for many reasons. First, some were registered only in non-Houthi controlled areas and the legitimate government controlled areas, even though there's an increase in the number of deaths uh, as reported by experts in Sana'a University and doctors. This is in parallel with the increase in the eastern part of Yemen. So this goes to show that there may be cases that are way more than the ones registered in the eastern area. Furthermore, there is a lack of proper equipment, there is no sufficient awareness related to uh, the COVID and the fact that there is the dengue fever. Furthermore, uh, people did not uh, refuse to abide by many restrictions for fear of their economic survival. The number of cases as per one of the Middle East envoys, uh, he spoke about more than one million cases in Yemen, which goes to show that uh, the numbers that are officially reported are not at all reflective of the real situation, which is multiple fold more than it really is. The authorities rely on rentier sources. They also rely a lot on foreign assistance and outer powers in order to design their response. The Houthis or the legitimate government almost adopted the same uh, uh, measures, restrictions, social distancing, uh, lockdown, as well as restricting the movement especially closing the entry and exit points. However, these measures were not very strict. They are, there were a lot of places where people were going. They also refused to deal with uh, certain official institutions to obtain the vaccine. Many were trying to uh, say that the vaccine is not efficient. Now, for the legitimate government, they took almost the same procedures and the same measures. However, they were less strict in Sana'a uh, during the lockdown regarding some government entities. They also stopped the flights towards India when the Indian mutant emerged. In the second wave, uh, the work was mostly on disseminating the vaccine and, uh, and ensuring a proper vaccine rollout. The legitimate government was 
able to obtain around 500,000 doses of the vaccine, but I don't think that they have used them all until now. Uh, not many people have obtained the vaccine, and this uh, percentage represents 2% only for the ones who are vaccinated. All the, also, the legitimate government uh, authorities or the Houthis did not take any measures to treat the implications of the COVID. Now, the last topic related to the economic implications. Yemen relies on a rentier economy and rentier so, uh, resources, and this was very much uh, uh, clear. First, their high reliance on oil and gas uh, and the fact that it, uh, uh, Yemen is highly exposed to the oil and gas price fluctuations. Also, the reliance on uh, foreign remittances and the remittances by the migrants Migrants or the Yemeni expats. Uh, however, these remittances were also reduced because the Yemenis working abroad were also working in uh, countries whose economy was suffering, such as Saudi Arabia, the, some Gulf countries, etc. Now, in terms of foreign uh, donations and assistance, this was also reduced. And the last resource that uh, Yemen relies on is the returns from taxes and customs fees. Even under the COVID, the authorities were able to ensure those resources. The other effect from an economic perspective is that all the economic fields were affected by the lockdown, but in the first wave, the economic activities and all the economic sectors and fields stopped. But things have uh, were better adapted in the second wave because the lockdown was not total. So the implications were only related to uh, so were related to not only uh, to the COVID pandemic but also to the war. There's also uh, an effect related to the macroeconomic indicators. There is a decrease in the GDP, the gross domestic product, as well as an increase in the joblessness or uh, unemployment rates. There is also an increase in the inflation rate in terms of the lack of stabilization of the commodity and product prices. So all these different factors are related. The decrease of the GDP, which had led to the increase of unemployment, uh, which in turn caused the increase in the inflation rate due to the war, of course, an increase in the exchange rate. The increase in the exchange rate was due to the fact that the government had not taken the right measures to deal with this crisis. In closing, we can say that there was a more spread of the virus in the second phase, which is the second uh, wave. So the crisis can be better dealt with if the vaccinations are made more available. And since the legitimate government was not able to use the oil experts, exports, sorry, this was another compounding factor. So this, uh, all these uh, factors affect the economic indicators. The implications of the war, war are going to overshadow the economy in Yemen and will uh, further the crisis unless there is a political settlement. Uh, 
democracy will not be able to be restored and the effects of the pandemic and the war cannot be eliminated in tandem. Thank you for your kind listening. Thank you for your contributions. Many details. My question is to Dr. Hassan. Kindly tell us more about the structure that you've presented in your paper and based on which you are identifying the trends for the implications and the recovery of 97 countries, as you mentioned. So what are the indicators that you've used? And how credible were they? So that they be a real guide for us to use as a model. Dr. Mohamed Abu Zaina from the development economies from a program from the, the Doha Institute. Thank you for the valuable contributions. I have a comment which includes a question. Now with this new mutant that is raising a lot of new uh, and old concerns, one might wonder what are the lessons drawn from the experience of the last two years, be it on the epidemic or the economic level. We have two examples here, Iraq and Yemen, two exceptional uh, examples, exceptional due to their uh, circumstances, of course. However, how were these countries able to face the pandemic at the economic and health levels? And what lessons can they draw in order to better face this new and uh, scarier uh, wave? Should the response be on the health level first and foremost? immunize uh, the community and the role and uh, reinforce the role of the health facilities and the health sector. You spoke about the delay in the vaccine rollout. Do you think that expediting the vaccine or the vaccination process could be helpful? And what can be done also on an economic level? We know the effects, the volume of those effects, the channels to operate these effects. So what can we do? Because there is a new wave of concern. Okay. Um, Dr. Hassan, let us start with the answers. Thank you for your questions. They are very profound and very important. Now, to answer Dr. Ashraf's question, I have briefly presented this paper, this attempt at presenting a comparative guide that would reveal the quality of the response and the health, economic, and social responses to the pandemic. Because most of the available data focus or focuses on one aspect. Consolidating all these different aspects represents a real challenge in order to find real indicators that are truly indicative of those different uh, aspects. Also, the trust that we have and the quality of those indices. Now, in terms of the health response, 
the Australian Louis Institute indicator was uh, selected because it consolidates six sub-indicators, uh, confirmed cases, death uh, cases per million people, confirmed death per million people, as well as the confirmed cases as a percentage of tests for 1,000 people. So this is related to the first uh, access, the health response. I think this is the most comprehensive assessment that you can find on only one indicator. Now to speak about the community response. Poverty on its own can uh, summarize a series of problems that can also reflect the government efforts to prevent people from uh, being uh, victims of poverty. So staying away from poverty is an indicator of uh, the difficulties that they face and the measures taken by the government to deal with those difficulties. So it was very important to include an indicator for poverty as part of our suggested guide. And I took the poverty percentage and it's, and it's reverse, uh, the people who are uh, very much far from poverty. And I calculated the percentage accordingly. The last indicator is the uh, development-related response, which is um, composed of more than 50 sub-indices, and this is issued by the UN on a yearly basis as it reflects the performance and the progress of the 17 SDGs by using many compatible indices around the world since 2017 and until now. Different reports and comparative studies have been issued on this specific matter. So this guide is a combination of all those indicators, and I've relied on the most trustworthy uh, such indicators, the UN uh, uh, indices that are the most credible and the most widespread, and I uh, included them in a compound guide from 0 to 1 or from 0 to 100. And I've rearranged the countries uh, regarding the value of the guide, and I've come up with the results that I've presented in my contribution. This is related to the guide. Now, regarding the experience itself, and my question, uh, or the question is by uh, Dr. Muhammad. Now, the experience is concluded. Yesterday, I liked a comment by one of the foreign experts and in the last uh, presentation he said that the experience is what we learn uh, the hard way so this was a, a sort of a literal translation of it it's not what we uh, study on paper or in theory so we learn by practice that is the hard way unfortunately and uh, uh, unsuccessful experiences or experiments they don't even learn this way or the hard way, that is. The problem with Iraq or in Iraq is that the decision makers, the policy makers, have perceived this crisis as a purely health crisis that is in parallel with a purely economic or monetary crisis. They didn't try to link uh, what, um, what is common amongst them. So the financial appro approach made the Ministry of uh, Finance deal with the pandemic from a purely financial but also traditional approach and uh, behavior. In 2020, the Ministry of Health Investments, knowing that it needs further resources in order to face such a large number of cases, $30 million were uh, uh, the small allocation for the Ministry of Health. It's a, such a small number. The first thing that we need to face any potential uh, pandemic wave is to reassess the last two years to draw the lessons and to identify the success stories to re-understand this pandemic and its implications. It's not only a health crisis. It is a compound crisis or pandemic of different aspects, economic, social, etc. For instance, on a social level, 
We haven't truly really dealt with the true implications of the crisis, the people who have lost loved ones. We haven't seen how to deal with the, uh, that situation or the situation of those people, how to help them overcome their uh, psychological um, scars. So we need to do a lot. I fear that we may reproduce the same approach if the pandemic witnesses another new wave. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. إذا تشيل بس الميوت افتح الميكروفون دكتور دكتور صلاح افتح أيضا دكتور صلاح مشاركة as far as uh, the lessons learned, uh, people prioritize uh, economy over health or vice versa sometimes. Uh, and uh, this is a wrong approach. In the United States of America, Sweden, and other countries, uh, they have uh, followed uh, certain approaches whereby certain institutions were shut down. Uh, some other countries uh, talked about the herd immunity and they focused on the health dimension rather than the economic dimension. Hence, we need to follow a holistic approach, especially when uh, some countries cannot afford uh, the complete uh, lockdown. So indeed, uh, we need to link the two, we need to link uh, the economy with the health uh, aspects. In the uh, Arab world, uh, we have uh, witnessed uh, grave uh, shortcomings, uh, especially as far as the alignment between these two sides uh, is concerned. Uh, I uh, personally uh, think that we haven't uh, uh, reached uh, the panacea yet, uh, uh, although uh, there are certain countries uh, who uh, uh, arrived at uh, a treatment uh, in medication, uh, but uh, obviously uh, this medication won't be distributed fairly. The developed countries uh, will utilize the lion's share of uh, uh, this achievement. Uh, unfortunately, the distribution won't be fair. Cooperation is a must. Uh, coordination is a must. And uh, concerted efforts uh, uh, ought to be uh, indeed uh, taken into consideration. Thank you, Dr. Salah. Any further questions? I'd like to uh, uh, thank again the Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies for organizing this conference and other important uh, scientific fora. I'd like uh, to thank uh, the two panelists, uh, Dr. Hassan Latif Kadim uh, here in this hall and Dr. Salah Yassin Al Maqtari uh, through Zoom. Thank you all and have a good day.